Welcome to the Destiny Iceberg. An iceberg chart is a way to rank knowledge based on how many people know about it. It is broken down into levels, starting with the most known stuff and gradually descending into the least known and most mysterious information. By the time we reach the dark below at the very bottom, this stuff is so hidden and crazy that almost nobody knows it exists, and some of it might even be a little disturbing. So you'll want to stick around to find out how deep your knowledge of Destiny goes as we delve into the depths of this iconic franchise. Beginning with the very tip of the iceberg, this is the stuff that Destiny is most famous for. Even if you've never played the game or you haven't played it in years, you may still be familiar with some of the entries in this level. Whether we wanted it or not. This is a monologue that gets read by Commander Zavala whenever you load into a certain strike in Destiny 1. This was one of the longest strike intros of all time, and due to it being drilled into players' minds every single time they played the strike, they quickly memorized it and started copy-pasting it everywhere on the internet. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. There have been many parody videos created over the years, and Zavala's voice actor even posted an awesome recreation of the monologue to celebrate hitting 100,000 followers. Whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal on Mars. The loot cave was just a regular looking cave when Destiny 1 launched, but players quickly discovered that it could be exploited and plundered for endless loot. The news of this discovery spread like wildfire, and soon enough, millions of players were sitting right here and shooting into the cave to collect infinite engrams for hours on end. The developers decided to patch this particular loot cave relatively fast, but other caves have also emerged over time. Nowadays in Destiny 2, one of the dungeons makes a reference to the original loot cave by containing an engram mechanic in the same location. Blueberry this is a name players use when referencing guardians who aren't in their fire team, since they show up as a blueberry-like circle on the radar. Generally though, the term can also be used to refer to any clueless player who is just wandering around and exploring the Destiny universe. Galahorn is easily the most well-known exotic weapon in Destiny history. Back in 2014 and 15, it was so ridiculously overpowered that many groups would ruthlessly require you to have the weapon in order to join them. This was brutal because the main way of getting the weapon was just random luck. The Galahorn became so iconic that it was featured in a Taco Bell commercial, made into a massive nerf weapon, and crafted into many real-life replicas, including this one made entirely out of LEGO. This rocket launcher was not added to Destiny 2 at first, but players were shocked to discover that a vendor called the Spider started selling the weapon during the Forsaken expansion. However, this was actually just a gag item since its price was 20 exotic engrams, and due to the game limiting you to only 10 engrams, it was impossible for any player to ever afford it. Galahorn was finally added to Destiny 2 during the 30th anniversary event, and although it is very powerful, it never came close to matching its ridiculous Destiny 1 legacy. Paul McCartney One of the legendary Beatles, Paul McCartney, directly worked on a lot of the music for Destiny. In fact, this horn melody that you're hearing in the background was written by McCartney. If you've ever played the game, I'm certain that you recognize this as it is one of the most iconic Destiny melodies. McCartney also wrote a Destiny song called Hope for the Future, and even produced a full music video where we can see a ghost creating a projection of him singing. I managed to find a behind-the-scenes video of them filming and turning him into a hologram. Many people assume that his contributions to the Destiny franchise end there, but McCartney also worked deeply on five of the eight Music of the Spheres tracks, which are the foundation for the Destiny soundtracks. To this day, the melodies he wrote can be heard throughout the games, and especially within Destiny 1. The darkness is not actually evil. Especially back in the early days of the franchise, many people assumed that the darkness was evil and that it was the main enemy of the game. Through the events of the last few years though, we've come to realize that the light and darkness are both just powers that make up the Destiny universe, and neither is entirely good or evil. The Trickster this was a mini-boss and quest during the Forsaken campaign in Destiny 2. She would try to fool players with traps that looked like exotic engrams, but would actually just explode when picked up. The Trickster eventually became a meme format that spread even outside of the Destiny community, and a few posts like these ones became very popular on social media. You just never quit, do you? Similar to Zavala's monologue about the Cabal on Mars, this was a repetitive voice line that players heard way too often. However, unlike the Cabal on Mars, this one from Hawthorne eventually became a little too obnoxious. You just never quit, do you? In fact, it was so hated that Bungie actually removed it from the game. 
The Exo Stranger is a mysterious character who was first introduced in Destiny 1, and she read the infamous line, I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Since Destiny 1 Vanilla was already being criticized for having a shallow story, people were quick to make fun of this line, with some even calling it the worst dialogue ever heard in a video game. We have learned a lot more about the stranger over time, but for a while she was just known as a mysterious exo with horrible writing. Dinklebot. This entry refers to Peter Dinklage, who originally voiced the ghost in Destiny 1 before he was eventually replaced by Nolan North. The Dinklebot voice lines were generally considered to be too monotone and uninteresting, but he definitely had some classics that I'll include here. We've woken the hive. It's in the walls. These are three different acronyms for what is essentially the same thing, a weekly update from the developers of Destiny. Back in 2014, it was called Bungie Weekly Update, and then it was called This Week at Bungie for a while, and now it's known as This Week in Destiny. Project Tiger was the codename for Destiny when it was still in early development. The name was inspired by early concept art that actually featured a tiger, and there was even a playable race known as Tiger Man in early versions of the game. Unfortunately, Tiger Man didn't make it into the actual game, but there are still tons of references to the tiger origin. To this day, taking a screenshot on PC will automatically name the file Tiger Release Final. Crayon Titans. This makes zero sense when you hear it for the first time, but ever since the early days, there has been a Destiny community joke about Titans eating crayons. I suppose all of the classes have memes making fun of the others, but this Titan one is particularly prevalent due to the class often focusing on brute force and meleeing as opposed to the more delicate Hunter and Warlock playstyles. SRL, or Sparrow Racing League, was a fan-favorite D1 event where players would race their Sparrow vehicles around various tracks while dodging obstacles and enemies. This event was originally introduced during the Christmas Dawning event of 2015. Scuffed D2 Launch and Curse of Osiris If you ask the average non-Destiny gamer what they know about Destiny 2, they'll probably tell you that it launched in a really rough state and almost died. And, well, they wouldn't be wrong. Especially with Destiny's Curse of Osiris expansion really failing to fix any of the issues with the game, we were literally a few weeks away from the death of the entire franchise. Luckily though, Cade and the events of the Forsaken expansion saved the game later that year. Early Trailers Destiny had a truly amazing marketing campaign before its original launch in 2014. There were multiple live-action trailers featuring incredible visuals and songs that I can't play on YouTube, but even if you've never played Destiny, you've certainly seen at least a few of these iconic trailers from the early days. It's time to step things up a little and progress onto the surface of the water tier. Although this information is still fairly well known by long-time Destiny players, some newer players may not be familiar with it, and it's definitely less famous knowledge overall. Randall the Vandal and Urzok the Hated Randall and Urzok were these two enemies in Destiny 1 that had an absurd amount of health for no apparent reason, making them notably more difficult to defeat. Randall in particular gained a lot of popularity and became one of the first ever Destiny memes. People started uploading videos in disbelief of this seemingly random level 8 Vandal surviving even the most insane damage from weapons like Galahorn. Years later, Bungie decided to revive the meme by creating a new, perfected version of Randall within the Wrath of the Machine raid. He was very rare though, and almost never spawned in, so only a few teams have ever had the distinct pleasure of fighting him within the raid. Within Destiny 2, Bungie has also hidden several more easter eggs, including a Nightmare Vandal on the Moon, a renewed Vandal on the Cosmodrome and EDZ, and an unkillable Vandal boss within the Grasp of Avarice dungeon. The Death of the Player During Season 9, there was a special event called the Corridors of Time, in which players had to unravel a bunch of extremely complicated puzzles. After this community event was solved though, we found a grave with a sword and a ghost. Upon interacting with it, we hear a message from Saint-14, who explains that this is actually our grave. So ultimately, we find out that somehow, sometime in the future, we will die and be laid to rest here along with this sword and a part of the fusion rifle Bastion, which was apparently one of our favorite weapons. Although the sword does look similar to some D1 swords, it does not yet exist as a usable weapon within the game, but perhaps sometime in the future we will learn more about it. Edge Transit 
During the beginning of the Forsaken expansion, there was a glitch where Prime Engrams seemed to always turn into a rather mediocre grenade launcher called Edge Transit. Something must have been wrong with the weighting of the weapon pool, because within just a few days, players started to get overwhelmed with so many Edge Transits that it quickly became a meme. I love this one in particular, showing the Edge Transit in literally every slot, everywhere within the game, which honestly didn't feel far from the truth. Crota Ethernet Cable in perhaps the most iconic Destiny glitch of all time, the raid boss Crota in Destiny 1 could be defeated by having a certain player unplug their console from the internet at a specific point during the fight. This would cause Crota to just kneel on the ground forever and let players secure the easiest raid clear of their lives. Halo 3 ODST Poster Before they revealed Destiny to the public, Bungie teased the game within their previous game, Halo 3 ODST. There was this poster with the words Destiny Awaits, an image of Earth, and a small circle that looks suspiciously like the Traveler. The logo beneath it also somewhat resembles an upside down looking version of Destiny's Tricorn logo. AFK Leveling For a really long time, players have been searching out ways to level or gain other forms of loot overnight while they are sleeping and AFK. Whether it's for farming the kill counter on your weapon or just getting to the max level in a season, there have been many times in Destiny's history where AFK leveling has been very lucrative. Perhaps the most famous instance was called AFK Forge Farming, where players would intentionally equip extremely low power items in order to infinitely queue into the activities and receive endless materials and engrams. 2402 these numbers refer to the world's first race for the Last Wish raid. Whenever a new raid is released in Destiny, there is always a massive race to see which team can beat it first. The Last Wish raid was famously the hardest raid in Destiny history, with only a couple teams completing it within 24 hours. Unfortunately, content creator Datto and his team managed to clear the raid in 24 hours and 2 minutes, and this event became very famous within the Destiny community. Two minutes late. Literally 2 minutes. Some people created a petition saying that the team should be granted the coveted Day 1 emblem because they only missed the window by 2 minutes, but ultimately Bungie decided not to, and the community has since embraced the 2402 meme. Exo Numbers The number in an Exo's name refers to the number of times they have undergone a memory wiping reboot. For example, you might be familiar with Cade 6 or Banshee 44. I feel like 44 is a lot already, but there is another EXO named Echo 2625, and yes, they have been rebooted 2625 times, and they currently hold the record for the most reboots of any EXO in history. Elixni vs Fallen This refers to the naming of one of the main races in the Destiny universe. They are called the Elixni, and that is the name that they use to refer to themselves, but Humanity and the Vanguard have long referred to them as the Fallen. This is because the Elixni once flourished under the Traveler's influence, but their civilization significantly degraded after the Traveler abandoned them. As Varix explains, their people now consider the term Fallen to be offensive, and potentially even similar to a slur. It may seem that my people have fallen, but it is not true. The word insults us. Colored Balls in the Tower there are various different colored balls within the tower, and if you move them to certain areas, it will summon a huge traveler ball and set off a bunch of fireworks in the sky. There's also this other ball that you can summon on the moon, but to this day, nobody has found a purpose for the ball. It doesn't seem to activate any special minigames by moving it around. Lastly, during the Red War, you could actually find the remains of one of these balls, which was a nod to their existence within the Destiny 1 tower. Additional Emote Actions some emotes have additional actions that can be activated by pressing the emote button again. Like for example, this emote will do this ending action when you press it again while you are still in the emote. Prometheus and Lord of Wolves Emblems These two emblems are used to commemorate brief periods of absolute insanity within Destiny's PvP. For a time, Prometheus Lens was absolutely ruining the Crucible and insta-killing everybody, and Lord of Wolves also had nearly infinite ammo and defeated people from absurdly far away. As a reward for enduring such pain, players who participated received these emblems. Telesto is an exotic fusion rifle that is known for causing… problems. For some reason that the average gamer cannot begin to understand, the mechanics of this weapon were extremely prone to causing bugs and glitches, and there have probably been like a hundred individual instances of Telesto breaking the game. There is literally an entire website dedicated to documenting every time Telesto broke something. From giving infinite orbs of power to literally crashing the game, the list here is pretty endless. 
In 2022, Bungie embraced the joke and made the Telesto seem to overtake the entire game, posting all kinds of strange messages on the screen and making the weapon itself behave very strangely. In fact, it was acting so strangely that the community began to form conspiracy theories about how the Telesto bolts rose up into the sky and formed constellations that represented a secret message. However, it was later revealed that the whole thing was just a joke, much to the dismay of people who spent multiple days looking for non-existent constellations. 12-player raids Destiny raids have always involved 6 players, but for a time there was a bug that allowed fire teams to hold up to 12 players in a raid. This led to some of the most crazy boss melts of all time, and a whole bunch of fun challenges invented by the community. I hope that someday Destiny does move beyond the cap of 6 players in every PvE activity, and I think this bug showed us that at least it is somewhat possible from a technical standpoint. Sparrow Horns You might know that your sparrow makes a beep when going in reverse, but back in Destiny 1, sparrows had actual horns that you could set off whenever you wanted. It would get highly annoying in sparrow racing when people would just start spamming their horns non-stop, but nobody really knows why horns were not brought forward into Destiny 2. There were so many different horn sounds that you could choose from, so here are a few of my favorites. The Revelry was a seasonal event kind of like the Halloween and Christmas ones. The reason why this one isn't on the tip of the iceberg is because it only happened once, and if you happened to not play during those two weeks in 2019, you probably didn't even know that this thing existed. During the Revelry, the tower was filled with flowers, since this was apparently a celebration of life in the Destiny universe. There was also a reskinned infinite forest with flowers added in, which people immediately criticized for being boring and stale, so perhaps this is why the event never returned in future years of Destiny. Free Emblem Codes there is a collection of emblems that I'll show on screen that you can get completely for free. Just go to bungie.net slash redeem and type them in to immediately unlock them in the game. Skating Tech This refers to various different types of movement tech within the game that allow you to travel extremely fast. In the past we had Titan Skating, but nowadays we have stuff like Shatter Skating that is more relevant. There's actually a ton of different ways to skate, and surprisingly it's not actually that hard to learn if you have someone correctly teach it to you. Skating tech is super fun in a variety of activities, but it is probably most useful in speedruns like this one where I attempt to beat the whole Lightfall campaign in 2 hours. We're about to move onto the Shallow Waters tier. Since we're now moving below the surface of the water, the iceberg will start to become a lot more obscure. If you're a dedicated Destiny player, you might still be familiar with some of these, but I'm certain that the deepest levels will truly put your knowledge to the test. We've still got a long way down to go. Before we go any deeper though, here's an entry that you probably haven't heard about because it just recently came out. Watcher of Realms is a next-gen fantasy RPG with over 100 heroes and stunning visuals and audio that make it feel truly immersive. Each hero and faction has rich storylines and lore secrets that you can uncover through a range of chapters, maps, and levels in the mystical content of Taya. As commander, you must assemble your team of heroes and strategically use their attacks and abilities to clear out difficult bosses and claim your rewards. You can also team up with your guild partners to challenge the epic dragon or climb the ranks of the tower defense PvP mode. With refreshingly diverse RPG elements, you can really build your hero's attributes by fighting for rare resources, gear, and artifacts. So don't forget to click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and download the game today. Thank you Watcher of Realms for sponsoring the video, and now let's dive into the shallow waters. The helmet stayed on. This entry refers to Marasov seemingly using this Wall of Wishes to summon Lord Shax for a booty call. The end of the lore entry reads, Mara sat and listened. They stayed for a long time. The helmet stayed on. This was followed by a ton of speculation that this was implying that the helmet stayed on while everything else was off. However, later on, people started to realize that yet another lore entry kind of contradicted this theory. It seemed that Mara might have been interested in hearing about another Destiny character called Sir Ido instead of doing anything with Shax. To this day though, this particular bit of Destiny lore has remained a meme among the community, especially because Shax literally never takes off his helmet within the game. His helmet staying on has also led to some absolutely crazy theories like people suggesting that he is William Shakespeare resurrected due to him also knowing some of Shakespeare's work by heart according to the lore. 2011 Pre-Alpha Builds This is some rare footage of a very early version of Destiny, assumed to be from sometime during 2011. 
We can see early versions of the enemies, grenades, user interface, jumping, and a few generic looking weapons. Personally, I think it's just super cool to get a peek behind the curtain and see a little bit about what the game looked like back in the day. Moons Haunted this one refers to an insanely popular meme tech story where astronauts return from the moon to arm themselves with pistols because the moon is apparently haunted. Shortly after this meme circulated the internet, the Destiny expansion Shadowkeep was revealed, in which the moon literally becomes haunted. Of course, someone made a Destiny-themed version of the meme where a Guardian is having that same conversation, except with Ikora instead of NASA. Bungie even acknowledged the meme by making this cool short trailer and also referencing it in the game with a bounty called Which Moon is Haunted? Zavala has hair. This entry is referring to a strange, limited edition D1 art book that shows a picture of Zavala, but instead of being bald like usual, he actually has a pretty significant amount of hair. This is particularly interesting when you consider that there is a cinematic trailer of Zavala being revived for the first time, at which point he is also bald, so I guess we don't really know how or if he ever did have hair. XP Throttling this one caused a ton of drama back in vanilla Destiny 2. Back then, there were two main ways to acquire the cosmetic Eververse engrams, buying them with real money or earning them with in-game experience. However, a huge controversy began when players realized that Bungie was secretly limiting and throttling experience gains, making it much harder to earn the free Eververse engrams. The more you played, the less experience you would actually earn. Players were understandably quite upset about this because they felt it was a sneaky way of encouraging more microtransactions. What I find crazy is that within a few hours of players figuring this out, Bungie immediately disabled the XP throttling system, stating that they were quote, not happy with the results. Comet Plague of Darkness This entry is referring to a supposed leak that came out in 2015, featuring the plans for the next several years of Destiny content. Of course, we now know that this leak was not entirely accurate compared to the content that was actually released, but it was really interesting to see expansions that we never got, including stuff like Comet, Plague of Darkness, and Vex Void. Fractaline Stock Market Right before the launch of Season of the Worthy in Destiny 2, there was a limited time event where players needed to spend massive amounts of a currency called Fractaline. Tons of investing memes started to circulate the community because the more you invested in the currency, the more you would get as a return in future weeks. There was a whole movement to spread the word about the stock market so that players would spend enough to complete the event. The number 7. 7 is Bungie's favorite number. Ever since the beginning of the company, they've constantly included the number within their games and branding, like right here on the top of their official profile pictures. The Bungie store sometimes features items that cost $777,777.77, but can be made affordable with a discount code. Bungie Day is also on 7-7, or July 7th, every year. And of course, the name Destiny itself has seven letters in it. Destiny, the fantasy game. According to a presentation given at a game developers conference, the original idea for Destiny was to make it a fantasy game. No crazy space aliens and science fiction, just strange magical creatures and epic looking castles. Eventually though, Bungie decided to combine the themes of science fiction and fantasy, calling the official genre of the game mythic science fiction. The Tire Game Right next to the main landing zone on the moon, there is this strange game where you can roll tires down these pipes and into some moon craters. If you get a perfect score, you get a triumph and it plays a funny sound, but the game is notorious for being strangely buggy and difficult to master. Guided Games Back when Destiny 2 was first revealed to the public, Bungie seemed to be very excited about this brand new feature called Guided Games. It was basically like a looking for group system where clans would guide individuals through various activities. Seemed like a cool concept, but in practice it was an absolute failure. Very few players actually used the system, resulting in hilariously long wait times, language barriers, and frequent connection issues. We had to wait over six years for an actual LFG system to be finally added to the game at the end of 2023. Callus makes wine out of planets. The Leviathan is a massive cabal spaceship with the function of grinding up entire planets and turning them into wine for Emperor Callus. The so-called royal wine was apparently able to provide psionic powers, and that's why Callus was so obsessed with it. The Toaster this one refers to a toaster that Bungie officially sold on their website for like $85. The toaster itself is a reference to the exotic weapon Jotun, since it actually looks like a fireball throwing toaster in game. Their real life toaster can even print the Destiny logo on your toast. Stasis is not ice. 
Stasis looks and sounds like it should be made of ice, but according to Bungie, it is far from being actual frozen water. Although it has a lot of properties relating to coldness, Stasis is more like an elemental manifestation of darkness, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. Transmog gives you stats. Yeah, so believe it or not, there is actually a way to get bonus stats on your character just by using transmog. If you transmog this specific chess piece on your character, you will get plus one resilience for no apparent reason. The $320 million cornfield. During Season of the Plunder, there was a community event where we needed to donate Captain's coins and other materials to rebuild the Elixir Quarter. About $320 million worth. In typical Destiny community fashion, we immediately discovered a bug and brute forced the event within just one day. We were all expecting a grand finale to this event, but it turns out we basically just paid for a couple new wooden benches and a cornfield. Due to the insane $320 million investment, the Destiny community felt a little let down by this anticlimactic ending to the event, leading to a bunch of memes about this being the most expensive cornfield of all time. Engrams decrypting into lower rarities. In the early days of Destiny 1, Engrams actually had a very high chance of decrypting into lower rarities, much to the chagrin of literally every Destiny player ever. There was nothing more frustrating than visiting the Cryptarch to turn in a shiny new Engram you got just for him to decrypt it into utter trash that you could not use. Vault Flying Back in Destiny 1, there was a way to spam a certain combination of buttons in order to fly across the tower and end up on top of one of these tall vertical vaults. This was somewhat of a secret for a while, and it was funny to watch as new players looked up in awe and wondered how you managed to get all the way on top of one of the vaults. Even after more people learned how to do it, the jumping still required a good amount of skill to pull off, so it remained a fun challenge for board guardians to attempt whenever they were waiting around in the tower. Bullets can go through walls. Armor-piercing rounds causes bullets to overpenetrate their targets in Destiny 2, but in Destiny 1 this also caused it to overpenetrate actual obstacles, including some very solid-looking walls. These days, people complain about getting hit through walls due to lag, but in Destiny 1 it could legitimately happen as an intended mechanic. No PvP team I believe this entry refers to the common theory that Bungie no longer has a team working on the development of Destiny PvP. This is definitely not the case, but I also suspect that the PvP team is quite small considering that PvP has felt neglected for so long and almost never receives any new content. Level question mark question mark knights. Back in the D1 alpha, players discovered these nearly unkillable hallowed knights that were level question mark question mark. They were by far the hardest enemy in the game and they became the unofficial final boss of the alpha. They would straight up one shot everybody and had an absurd amount of health, leading a lot of players to upload gameplay of the fight. Forever 29 In vanilla Destiny 1, it was extremely common to get stuck with your guardian at level 29. Since the only way to get high level gear was to complete the raid, you had to be extremely lucky to get all of your armor slots to maximum light level. Thus, the hashtag Forever29 remains somewhat of an inside joke for veteran D1 players. Ghost Bullets This is a term referring to bullets that seemingly vanish into thin air and do not impact your target. Back in Destiny 1, this was much more of an issue, with a huge percentage of bullets just disappearing and missing when they should have obviously connected as a headshot. This was very frustrating, but eventually it was addressed and isn't really an issue nowadays. Massive Toads This one just refers to these epic toads that appeared on concept art, supposedly in a location we've never seen called Old Chicago. Ever since these images came out, people have been asking Bungie when the giant toads will be revealed in-game. Welp, there goes Flawless. If you complete a raid or dungeon without anyone dying, you unlock a special Flawless achievement. Even though the overwhelming majority of fire teams are not attempting to get a flawless run, it has still become a requirement to say, Welp, there goes flawless, whenever your fire team experiences their first death in the activity. Drifter vs. Vanguard A few years ago, there was a pretty dramatic quest where players were forced to either pledge allegiance to Drifter or the Vanguard. It felt pretty significant because it was clear that there was no going back. Once you picked a side, you were committed forever. Everyone assumed that this would have further implications down the road, leading to perhaps different narratives depending on which side you picked. However, this quest led to absolutely nothing other than getting a little reputation for whatever side you joined. Considering that the quest has been fully removed from the game since the incident, it's safe to say that nothing will come of this in the future either. Trading items with other players Have you ever wished that you could trade loot with a friend? Maybe they have a great roll on a weapon that you really want, but they just don't use it. Well, believe it or not, in-game trading was actually a thing in a very early version of Destiny 1. 
As we can see in this pre-alpha footage of the game, there is actually an option to trade this other player standing in the tower. Negative silver. It might sound ridiculous, but it is actually possible to go into debt and have negative silver in Destiny 2. This has happened a few times over the years due to platform and server glitches related to the game store, but the issues were mostly corrected and silver balances were restored to usual. EV30 Tumblr. This was the first ever Sparrow with the ability to perform tricks. Way back in December 2014, this was such a novel concept that the player base quickly became obsessed with this new Sparrow and finding new places to do crazy tricks. We are about to progress into the middle of the iceberg. This one contains a lot of community secrets and stories, interesting lore tidbits, and a few really intriguing conspiracy theories. Dave Samuel in Vidox Dave Samuel is a lead visual effects artist at Bungie. However, despite his job revolving around visual effects, he has become famous among Destiny fans for his dramatic sound effect recreations. Here are a few of my favorites. Three sources of power, and then those then get launched out, and then those fly through the air. They're like, the arc wizard. The sparks go out, and then goes out, captures the other guys. It's just a little bit more... Uh, Dave has been doing these amazing impressions in Bungie Vidox for many years now, and it is always one of the most entertaining parts of the video for those who keep an eye out for it. Black Tier Loot There have been many rumors over the years about a mysterious rarity even more elite than exotic. Exotics are pretty unique as is, so we can only imagine how insane Black Tier Loot would be. Due to exotics becoming extremely common over the years, it would make sense to add a new rarity sometime in the future. During an interview, Bungie developers did say that if a new rarity were to be added, it would definitely be black. Two tokens and a blue. D2 launched in a pretty rough state and included a now infamous system called the token system. Instead of earning loot, you would instead earn tokens that could be fed into slot machines for randomly generated loot. Along with the fact that weapons had no random rolls back then, this made the loot feel incredibly unrewarding and it was a major criticism of the game at the time. So during a reveal stream for the first expansion, players were desperately hoping that the loot issues would be addressed. But instead, we got this. I mm. promised before that this was the most rewarding public event. Suffice it to say, players were dismayed to discover that the most rewarding public event was going to give two tokens and a blue, making the loot essentially meaningless. Enemies noticed we love to dance on their corpses. This one is pretty amusing. The Cabal have officially noted that Guardians love to dance on their corpses. A lore card reads, Survivors reported Guardians foraging for equipment, dancing, and performing acrobatics with light vehicles. The Vex are not robots. A lot of players tend to assume that the Vex are the robotic beings that we see walking around, but this actually is not the case. The Vex are the living organisms suspended within mind fluid, and they merely exist within their mechanical frames. So although it might seem that the Vex are a race of crazy robots, they're actually just tiny beings piloting the machines. Blog Post Cats Within Bungie's weekly update articles, they have a strange tendency to sneak in small hyperlinks that lead to funny cat pictures or GIFs. So next time you're reading one and you see a link that looks out of place, try clicking on it and see what happens. 7th Vault of Glass Chest Back in Destiny 1, many players believed that there was a hidden 7th chest somewhere within the Vault of Glass. Due to Bungie doing everything in the number 7, this seemed like a reasonable theory. There was also this platform with a Vex portal that many people thought might be somehow related to the elusive 7th chest. It was never found, but within the D2 Whisper mission, there was a similar looking portal that seemed to be traveling to the Vault of Glass as a nod towards the myth of the 7th chest. Years later, this player posted on Reddit claiming to have finally found the 7th chest. It looked completely legit since he had to travel far out of bounds and he found it mysteriously floating in the sky. Eventually though, it was discovered that this was actually just one of the other chests from a different part of the raid, and not a genuine seventh chest. Some of the mystery remains alive though, with Bungie developers claiming as late as 2023 that there might still be undiscovered chests within Destiny's raids. Basketball Court of Oryx Within the King's Fall raid in Destiny 1, the community found a special room that looked like a basketball court where you could dunk an orb into a hoop. 
Players searched for ages to find a hidden minigame, hidden chest, or some other sort of puzzle here, but Luke Smith confirmed that dunking was the extent of the basketball court and that there was no loot to be found. European Dead Zone and Mercury in Destiny 1 In one of the early D1 trailers, we can actually see the European Dead Zone and Mercury, confirming that they were indeed meant to be part of the original Destiny 1 launch. The EDZ is perhaps the largest destination ever made, so it would have been crazy to have both of these in vanilla D1. It's also kind of weird to think that two out of the four planets in vanilla D2 were originally created way back in like 2013. If you want to go even deeper down this rabbit hole, Io was also created long before Destiny 2 released. It was originally going to be a location on Mars in Destiny 1. A pyramidian structure can clearly be seen in the background on this Mars PvP map, and also data miners have found plenty of evidence that it was a scrapped location inside of D1. The 15th Wish Back in 2018, players discovered these codes within the game that could be input into this wall in order to grant wishes. The wishes included rewards like special emblems, hidden chests, and teleportation to certain encounters within the last wish raid. In total, we found 14 codes. But then, we discovered a triumph stating that there were actually 15 total wishes. Thus began a frantic search for the 15th wish, with players forming all kinds of conspiracy theories and scouring literally every inch of the Dreaming City location. Perhaps the most promising theory was related to a lore entry. It said that if you got to 999 power and then soloed the final boss within the dungeon called Shattered Throne, you would, quote, unlock the true ending of the Dreaming City. It took us over a year to reach 999 power, and everyone watched with great anticipation as the highest power level player in the world grinded for an average of 18 hours a day to finally complete the challenge. He reached 999 power, entered the dungeon, defeated the boss, and… nothing happened. Very anticlimactic, considering that we waited over a year for this exact moment. A few days later, Savathun apparently took control of Bungie's weekly update blog and mentioned that this whole thing was just a trick. Eventually, Bungie removed the 15th wish from the Triumph, leading players to believe that it is no longer able to be completed and maybe did not even exist in the first place. Fallen Nightclub This entry refers to a fallen lost sector that existed on the Tangled Shore, where there was a full nightclub including a DJ, bouncer, shanks with drinks on top of them, and you could even activate the music and have it play Paul McCartney's song Hope for the Future. I can't play it here because this is YouTube, but it was absolutely amazing to discover this place for the first time. The Veil This isn't about the actual Veil, but instead about a rumored enemy race that goes by the name The Veil. Back in 2019, there was a leak suggesting that the Veil is the race controlling the pyramid ships, and many people thought that they would look something like this, which is actually legitimate concept art for a final race that we've never seen. More recently, in 2023, we've also gotten more leaks suggesting that this race could be coming soon, but now they are called the Shadow. Wouldn't that be an interesting name? Anyway, the community keeps going crazy and making all kinds of conspiracy theories about the next race we will encounter in the Destiny universe. The Fate of All Fools this story refers to an exotic weapon called the Fate of All Fools. It is unique in Destiny history as the only exotic to ever be owned exclusively by one single player. This player's name was Eric, and it all started when his wife made a post on Reddit about how he had gone through seven brain surgeries in the last 11 months. She said he loved Destiny so much that he would describe it in great detail to his neurologist. Apparently, he was also more concerned with the surgery interfering with Destiny's release than he was about the actual surgery itself. The post absolutely blew up on Reddit, and eventually someone at Bungie took notice and decided to give him the exotic Fate of All Fools. This was absolutely perfect for him, because scout rifles were his favorite weapon and he wanted one that could deal solar damage, just like the Fate of All Fools. It was really special to see the whole community come together and have Bungie give him such a unique and awesome gift. Fast forward almost a decade later, Eric is alive and well. His wife posted an update saying that the recovery was remarkable and he is doing better than anyone ever expected. Even though his exotic bears some similarity to No Time to Explain and Jade Rabbit, it remains the only one-of-a-kind exotic to ever exist. Scrapped D1 Storyline Prior to the launch of Destiny 1, there was a completely different story for the game that just got entirely deleted. When it was presented to the higher-ups for approval, they decided that they didn't like it and made the narrative team start over from scratch. We have only limited information about what the original story was like, but we do know that Crow was a central focus and he would accompany us on adventures to explore the mysteries of the Collapse. 
Our ghost was not a central focus like he ended up being in the final game because Crow essentially took his place as the main character traveling with us. The Vanguard leaders, Cade, Ikora, and Zavala, weren't really a part of the story at all. Of course, this is wildly different from the actual game we received, so it's just crazy to think about how much changed in such a short time before D1's original launch. We will never know exactly what we missed out on. Shax's Mixtape In Zavala's office, there is a mixtape that Shax made for him. It is extremely long, but here is a brief part of it. Magnificent! Now stay focused! Japan exclusive dance trailer. This one refers to a Destiny 2 Japanese trailer called Freestyle Playground where a hunter is dancing in the middle of nowhere and then eventually a whole group of guardians join in and start doing all kinds of crazy moves. There are only a handful of live action trailers that have ever been made for Destiny, and this one is easily the least known about due to the Japanese origin. It is incredibly well done, and although we can't be certain of this, many people believe that the massive dance off is canon within the game. The War Mantis armor set reads, The more we danced, the more the Cabal Battle.net lit up with requests for intelligence. D is for Destiny. This is a children's book created by artists and writers at Bungie. It's a rhyming alphabet book using a bunch of Destiny terms like Cabal and Fallen. The Forklift Back in Destiny 1, we had these awesome racetracks within the Sparrow Racing League, but there was one forklift that became infamous due to it being placed in a highly inconvenient location. It seems like one of the map designers deliberately placed it right in the middle of the track, and players would constantly crash into it and lose the race as a result. For this reason, many memes were created about this hilarious, immovable forklift. That wizard came from the moon. This is an iconic Dinklebot voice line that was so bad it got cut after the game's alpha. Bungie embraced the meme though and probably made a million dollars from selling these t-shirts featuring the phrase. That wizard came from the moon. You are married to Shax. Technically anyone who got the vow bow during the Crimson Days is now married to Lord Shax, so at least according to the lore, your guardian may be married in Destiny 2. Male Cabal I'm pretty sure this entry is just referring to the fact that male cabal are the ones who give birth and breastfeed. Self Water Damage In D1, there was a mechanic where if you stood in water, it would allow you to shoot near your own feet and actually hit yourself. I guess you could call it Splash Damage. Expired Ramen Coupons Following Cade's death in 2018, we received a quest where we could visit the ramen shop in the tower and purchase these strange ramen coupons that apparently expired years ago. The strange and suspicious part was that you could actually continue purchasing these over and over, leading some players to completely fill up their inventory with the coupons. These players were hoping that these coupons could maybe be used for a secret upcoming objective or quest. Unfortunately, this never led anywhere, and the coupons continue to be worthless to this day. Back on the reef in D1, there was a spot that didn't have a kill barrier, so you could just fall under the map and chill. Hive are afraid of fusion rifles. Apparently Hive consider disintegrations from fusion rifles to be extremely scary and traumatic because they believe that those deaths yield no soul fire, giving them a difficult time in the afterlife. Used Toothbrush Upon completing a quest in 2019, Eris would give you a bag of goodies which included a toothbrush. This toothbrush could be used, and then it would be replaced in your inventory with a new item called Used Toothbrush. Since this item featured the description text of, perhaps it can be used later, players have been reading way too far into it for years and desperately hoping that there will be a hidden purpose for the used toothbrush. In all likelihood, it's just a trash item with no use, but thousands of players are still holding onto it in their inventories just in case. Operation Save the New Lights During Bungie's 30th anniversary event, there was an issue causing all new and returning players to get forced into the Dares of Eternity. These new and returning players were no match for the activity, considering that they were severely underleveled and did not have access to any of the champion mods needed to beat it. And thus began Operation Save the New Lights. Experienced players would intentionally lower their power level in order to match into the activity together with the noobs, and then equip all of their max level gear in order to help the new players defeat it. Bungie officially endorsed this movement and incentivized veteran players to help out by offering an exclusive emblem to those who assisted the noobs. Even though this all began with an unfortunate situation, it was really cool to see the community come together for a good cause. Human Exo Characteristics This refers to the fact that Exos are built with many human characteristics like the desire to eat, drink, and mate. This is because Exos have human minds uploaded into their artificial bodies, and without regular human characteristics in these new artificial bodies, the mind would go insane and assume that the body is dead, leading to their actual death. 
So basically, these so-called humanisms allow exos to not reject their new bodies and survive. Ornaments are not cosmetic. This refers to the fact that ornaments in Destiny 2 can actually have an effect on gameplay and they aren't just purely cosmetic. Like for example, this chaperone ornament causes the barrel to become slightly longer. Due to some absolutely wild Destiny science that nobody really understands, having a longer barrel on your weapon actually increases its range. So in effect, this weapon will increase the range of the chaperone just a little bit due to it making the barrel a few inches longer. At one point Bungie said that they patched this, but I've tested it extensively and it still works in the game today. Another example of an ornament having a large effect on gameplay would be the Vigilance Wing ornament. It makes the sights much more open so that you can clearly see the target, and this is a massive improvement over the original sight that you'll see without an ornament. Original Fireteam is dead. When the Lightfall cutscenes and trailers were first revealed, the community began to speculate that the Guardians who die right here are actually the same as the original Guardians that we saw back in the 2014 Destiny 1 trailer. However, after a bit of investigation, it seems that these are both just instances of Guardians wearing generic armor sets, because they all seem to be different genders in the two different trailers, meaning that the original D1 trailer Guardians are potentially still alive. We now approach the second to lowest level, the Deep. This level contains a lot of niche knowledge about the game that you'll probably only know if you've played the game for a really, really long time or you've watched a ton of YouTube videos. As we inch closer to the dark below, some of these entries begin to get pretty bizarre and unsettling. Secret Golden Cyclops When adventuring way out of bounds on Mercury, some players have discovered a Golden Elite Cyclops deep underground. This is noteworthy because it is the only Golden Cyclops known to ever exist. Could this be a secret testing area that was used during development and never was supposed to be found by players? Was this a model intended to be a boss that was ultimately scrapped? We may never know if there is a true meaning behind this enemy. There has only been one non-human guardian. This refers to the fact that Felwinter was actually the only non-human guardian in history. Felwinter was an Iron Lord who was created entirely by Rasputin. Since Exos and Awoken are both essentially transformations of humans, this makes Felwinter the only guardian who was never a human. Unused Destinations Destiny has several unused locations that are extremely strange and mysterious. Some of these locations even appear to be fully finished areas that could be used within the game, and yet they are only accessible by exiting the map and exploring out of bounds. The craziest example of a location like this would probably be the Galaxy Pools. This location is beautiful and has been seen in the game for years, but for whatever reason it has no official purpose and it isn't used in any type of quest or campaign. Another super interesting environment that people have found is this misty forest area. It has some trees that are actually destructible, implying that at some point Bungie was experimenting with adding destructible environments to the game. The Vex love rock music. You may know that the Vex have the ability to time travel, but did you know they are also massive fans of rock music? In fact, there is a scannable on Nessus that implies the Vex literally travel through time just to listen to classic rock. Okay, somehow the Vex are listening to classic rock from the Golden Age. They're death robots with good taste in music. Destiny Google Earth Right before Destiny 1 launched in 2014, there was a system called Destiny Planet View where you could basically zoom around all of the locations just like you can on Google Earth. In fact, it was powered by the same exact technology from Google, and it was the first time Google had ever mapped out a complete video game. Crota's End and King's Fall Super Raid Game director Luke Smith revealed on a podcast that the two raids called Crota's End and King's Fall were originally planned to be a single massive super raid. This raid was actually planned to be the first raid in Destiny 1, but it was eventually decided that since the D1 campaign ended with a focus on the Vex, they wanted to also have a Vex-themed raid. And thus, the Vault of Glass was born. Which, by the way, was originally called the Glass Throne. I'm in trouble. This is an emblem that originated in the Mars Community event, and it is hiding a secret message. Someone discovered that if you scan the emblem as a spectrogram in order to convert it into sound, it seems to be saying, I'm in trouble. 12 Slides This one remains a complete mystery. For whatever reason, Guardians are incapable of sliding more than 12 times in a row within the game. It will simply stop you from sprinting and make you awkwardly crouch. If anyone who works at Bungie would like to explain this in the comments, that would be super interesting. Zavala Crochets 
Zavala is actually obsessed with crocheting, which is similar to knitting for those who might not know. We can find evidence of this through the yarn and other materials in his office, and we can also confirm that he has been crocheting at a high level for a long time since he teaches a crochet course meant for titans. You can hear an announcement advertising his crochet course in the D1 Tower. Chair in the wall trick. This is a trick where you can use your chair or sitting emote in order to partially put your guardian inside a wall. This makes it so that enemies cannot damage you with direct attacks. Doing this is particularly useful in strikes like this one where you need to capture the warsat while surviving. Moth people. There is some concept art of a potential enemy race of moth people that unfortunately never manifested as an actual in-game race. It even includes cool notes like sound of hair shaking at each step. The Hive do have some moth-like influence, so some people believe that the moth people were cut and then folded into part of the Hive. The concept art looks absolutely phenomenal though, and I hope someday we see something like this in-game. Komarov is the name of a green armor set in Destiny 1, and this is a reference to Vladimir Komarov, the first person to ever die while on a space mission. Additionally, on this cloak of the cosmonaut, the description reads, Vladimir Komarov helped build and fly Earth's first ships. He gave his life to the frontier. Given Destiny's focus on space, this seems a fitting tribute for someone who gave his life for space exploration. Destiny x Red Bull Destiny collaborated with Red Bull on a limited-time promotional campaign in 2015. These special Destiny-branded Red Bull cans were sold in 7-Eleven and Walmart and offered exclusive in-game bonuses, a 50% XP buff, and a quest. The quest rewarded the SR1 Swift River Sparrow and the Joyride Ghost. Gold Coins in the Tower There used to be extremely tiny gold coins hidden throughout the tower. The first person to collect all of these coins and send pictures to Bungie was awarded with a special one-of-a-kind emblem. Lament has breast pump sound effects. During the Beyond Light reveal Vidoc, Bungie mentioned how they have a lot of creative ways they've sourced sounds for the game, including from a breast pump. It seems that the sound effects on the Lament sword is what they were referring to. Here is what the sword sounds like, and here is what the pump sounds like. Zur's spawn isn't random. Zur is an extremely well-known vendor who visits Destiny every weekend to sell exotics. It seems that he always appears in a random location, and people are always googling where he is or asking their friends to reveal his location. However, there is a theory that his movements are not random at all. Occasionally, Zur has said, my movements are to a significant degree dependent on planetary alignments. Now, it's possible that this is only referring to when he appears and not where, but that is really up to interpretation. The tower announcements in D1 would occasionally break the fourth wall by explicitly mentioning Bungie.net within the game. In-game proposal. Two game developers actually got engaged at the tower in Destiny 1. They were given a custom proposal emote and a wedding warlock bond in order to facilitate this special event. Cabal Size this one is referring to how Cabal can increase in size depending on how prideful they feel. For whatever reason, their feelings of pride are linked to the release of their growth hormone. So for example, this is why Keitel's Cabal are so huge, as they have a deep respect for their leader and take pride in fighting together with her. The Counterbalance Conspiracy This was an extremely strange conspiracy that circulated in early 2023. Some players were claiming that the Counterbalance mod would actually provide a tangible benefit to players using shotguns in PvP. Later on, we asked Bungie developers about it on a podcast, and they confirmed that the mod does not improve the performance or consistency of shotguns. Raining Engrams There used to be an extremely rare glitch that would sometimes cause infinite engrams to rain from the sky. There are very few documented instances of this happening, but I managed to find a couple videos that I'll show here. Apparently, this was caused by defeating a ton of enemies in a single location within a short period of time. Zur's Broken Spine The reason why Zur is always so hunched over is actually because he has a broken spine, according to the lore. Here is Zur's voice actor reading the lore about himself. He caroms off a dewy boulder with a sickening crunch. That is his spine. He will never stand straight again. Hidden Korean Vendor 
Unless you are the 0.2% of my audience from Korea, you've likely never seen this vendor in game before. This vendor is exclusively found when playing the game from Korea. Wall Breach There have been a few wild glitches in Destiny history that allowed players to simply walk through walls. This made it incredibly easy to go out of bounds everywhere, but it was also pretty funny to see people who could just walk inside of solid objects. Alpha Loopy ARG This refers to an alternate reality game created by Bungie to market the original release of Destiny. Over the span of a week, a strange Bungie account by the name of Alpha Loopy released cryptic messages, images, and webpages meant to be decoded by the community. The reward was a piece of Destiny music, and in fact, this was the first ever music track released. It predates all of the trailers and gave us our first taste of the epic music the game has to offer. The music was later used within the game's actual title screen and also in the tower. We are now moving on to the final level, the Dark Below. If you know about any of the entries in this bottom level, you are likely in the top 1% of most dedicated and knowledgeable Destiny players. Memory of Bruce This ghost projection called Memory of Bruce was a mystery at first. Players were wondering who Bruce was and what this strange looking symbol meant. It was eventually revealed that the projection is an actual paw print of a ferret named Bruce who sadly passed away. Bruce was owned by a Bungie developer named Chris Proctor, and the ghost projection is a really nice gesture made by one of his co-workers. For those who may not know, Chris is an amazing weapons designer who sometimes appears on podcasts and offers incredible insights into the game's sandbox. Puzzle leads to actual treasure in New York. At the beginning of the Warmind expansion, players discovered a secret puzzle. Destiny has had many secret quests and exotics over the years, so many players were assuming this would be another puzzle like that, and everybody was hyped. The puzzle began with this symbol within the AI Rasputin's bunker, and a massive number of guardians started contributing to solving the riddle. After a lot of decoding though, it became apparent that this wasn't a secret exotic or quest, but actually a letter from Elsie Bray. The message included a set of extremely precise coordinates at the bottom, leading players to wonder if something could actually be located there in real life. People quickly realized that a studio working on the game named Vicarious Visions was also located nearby, so it seemed believable that they might have actually hidden something at the coordinates. All of the Guardians in New York started scrambling to reach the coordinates, which were located deep in the Sleeping Beauty Mountains. They had to hike for a long time and travel off of the usual trail, but eventually they found a cache from Rasputin. When they opened it up, they discovered it had a massive Valkyrie-like spear, plus a box of gold coins, a letter from the developers at Vicarious Visions, and a journal for recording visitors. The letter from the developers thanked them for solving the puzzle, and informed them that the Valkyrie spear is one of only three in existence. One at Bungie, one at Vicarious Visions, and one right here. The letter also instructed them to take a single gold coin and then use the journal to write feedback and share thoughts with the developers. Having an in-game puzzle actually lead to a real-life treasure cache is simultaneously one of the coolest and yet least talked about things in Destiny history. Scrapped Destiny Intro Cinematic Okay, this one is absolutely wild. This is a scrapped Destiny introduction cinematic showing a wildly different story than what we know today. It starts off showing the cosmonauts on Mars just like the official cinematic, but then it takes a drastic turn into unexplored territory when the cosmonauts spot a strange cloaked figure off in the distance and draw their weapons. They approach this mysterious female entity who tells them that the Traveler is coming and that everything is about to change. There are also some really cool and detailed concept pictures for this entity, but we know basically nothing about her or who she might be. It is just absolutely wild to think that there was a whole different version of Destiny out there, but Bungie decided to take it in a different direction and completely remove this strange character. The Last Exit Mystery During a Bungie stream, one of the designers hinted that there is a hidden easter egg somewhere within the PvP map called Last Exit. Throughout the map, there's a bunch of crazy codes and strange text, and this led a ton of Destiny codebreakers to go insane trying to decipher the code to discover a hidden message. There was a big monitor at the center of the map, and people were convinced that solving the puzzle would somehow cause the monitor to display something. Many people were originally hoping that this would lead to some kind of hidden exotic quest, but it was eventually revealed that there was no loot attached to solving the puzzle. 
This significantly reduced the community's motivation to solve the puzzle, and eventually, people just stopped trying altogether. Sources at Bungie have confirmed that this mystery is still unsolved by the community, and they refuse to give hints towards a solution, making me think that it will never be solved. Destiny Sparrows IRL Have you ever wanted to ride a Destiny Sparrow in real life? Well, it turns out, you actually can. Back in 2017, Activision actually sponsored the creation of some functioning real-life water sparrows that look absolutely insane. Apparently they are pretty hard to control, but you can do a barrel roll and other tricks after you get a little bit of experience. These look so fun, and I'm surprised that almost nobody knows they even exist. Ahamkara know they are in a video game. The Ahamkara are a powerful dragon-like species, and it seems that they actually know they exist within a video game. Within the clause of the Ahamkara lore tab, it suggests that the Ahamkara are fully aware of being trapped within the game, calling it a suffocating prison. They seem to appeal directly to the player, asking us to somehow bring them into the real world, and promising that in return, they will make our wildest thoughts and dreams into reality. Xylar the Timeless Xylar the Timeless is a secret final boss within the Vault of Glass who can only be summoned by doing a very specific set of challenges on all of the encounters. He will spawn in after Atheon is defeated, and he is extremely difficult to defeat. The main reason why he is so difficult to defeat is because he does not exist. Xylar is a practical joke that has been circulating around the community for years. Someone will reference this secret boss and then act like he is real, and then others will play along in order to confuse anyone who isn't in on it. This guy even went to extreme lengths to write a highly detailed guide on how to summon and defeat Xylar, and all of the replies are just people discussing the mechanics of the boss fight and acting like he's completely legitimate. Aphelion This is potentially the most terrifying monster in the entire Destiny universe. We have never encountered these creatures and know very little about them, but there are some rather unsettling descriptions provided by Awoken Tekiuns that tell us a bit about them. Here is one of the descriptions. Those statues there, look up at them. Those Techians died a vicious, irreversible death. They died in trance, each one screaming with the other's voice, each one unable to comprehend the horror of the thing that had killed them. There is also the following description, which is arguably more unsettling for us as guardians who are usually able to deal with most enemies. I pray you never see it, my friend, because no matter what gods you have killed, you will not survive it. Based on this, it seems that no one has ever survived an encounter with the Aphelion, and suggests that even Guardians would not stand a chance. Dr. Crispy 93 This refers to a very interesting Dark Below trailer in which comedian Pete Davidson voices a Guardian named Dr. Crispy 93. It's actually pretty hilarious and sounds oddly similar to your stereotypical YouTuber ad read. It is possible that Dr. Crispy was actually killed during the Red War because we can see his helmet hanging around the console's neck. Exclamation point letting go. This is an extremely strange and creepy Destiny YouTube video uploaded in 2011. This video includes the official Destiny Tricorn logo along with some text and Morse code that is suspiciously similar to the Destiny franchise, making it the earliest known appearance of Destiny's branding and technically the first ever Destiny related video. To reiterate, this video came out with Destiny's logo in it nearly two years before Destiny was even announced. Here's a few seconds of the video. The video continues on like this for a while, but the intro is really the most interesting part. This image of the hanging exo shares remarkable similarities to the season of the Seraph, something that happened in game literally 12 years later. It seems that this hanging exo might even be the basis for the Destiny Tricorn logo as they are about the same shape, with the exo's head being the oval in the center. The channel who uploaded the video is called JoyUse7, which originally led many people to think this was another elaborate puzzle created by Bungie. However, Bungie representatives proceeded to come out and say that this is actually just a fan project. A fan project that somehow knew about Destiny's logo and themes years before the game was announced. Some people have speculated that it might have been an unofficial leak from a Bungie employee, but to be fair, it is conceivable that a fan might have been able to patch together very limited information from legal documents of early copyright filings related to Destiny. 
Still, it seems extremely suspicious that even a superfan could know this much about the game this long before it was released. And what reason would they have to create such a dark and cryptic video about their findings? The last thing I'll mention here is this image that flashes on the screen for about 0.1 seconds. If you take a look at the right hand side, does that look familiar? Maybe? I'll let you draw your own conclusions on this one. Antonio Brown ad and cursed dancing video. Antonio Brown and Chad Johnson are famous American football players who actually made an ad for Destiny 2. Featuring hilariously bad aim and cringeworthy narration, it's pretty funny to see them stumble their way through the opening missions of the game. But it doesn't end there. I managed to find this extremely cursed Antonio Brown dancing video where he... Yeah, I'm just gonna let the video speak for itself. The location of the last city. Someone spent an absurd amount of time studying the position of the sun and the movements of shadows in Destiny 1, and eventually came to the conclusion that the last city was located in Chile among the Andes Mountains. However, this guy left a reply claiming that he worked at Bungie and that the last city was actually supposed to be in the Himalayas. For the longest time, it seemed that the whole community trusted this guy and believed that the last city was actually in the Himalayas. But in the end, it seems this person was actually just a troll, because years later when we traveled to the orbital station, the geography suggested that the last city is indeed in Chile, just like the original player calculated nearly a decade earlier. We cannot fail community events. This refers to the theory that we cannot fail community events in Destiny 2, meaning that whenever there is a community event, there is no need to actually do anything because no matter what, we will be successful. I think this theory is pretty likely to be true because the developers ultimately spent a lot of time designing the content that comes at the end of a community event, and it would be a shame for that content to go to waste. Another argument supporting this theory is that Bungie has reduced the difficulty of community events in the past, forcing us to complete them when we weren't on track to succeed. Guardian Hitbox Gaps when testing for one of my myth-busting videos, I realized that player hitboxes actually have gaps in them. Like, you can shoot a player and just have the bullet pass right through a gap in them and not deal any damage. This can only be achieved when the target looks up to rotate their hitboxes a little, but it's still super intriguing that it's actually possible to shoot through someone. As far as I can tell from my research, my video is the only place this has ever been mentioned, so I do feel it deserves a spot this far down on the iceberg. Parade Intro This is a theory that Destiny 2 was originally meant to begin with us parading through the last city before it was attacked by the Red Legion. This is supported by the fact that we are wearing ceremonial armor at the start of Destiny 2, and there are also several images during the loading of the game showing a parade. This would have been a very fitting way to celebrate our accomplishments in Destiny 1 and transition us into Destiny 2. I also think it would have been extremely cool to see the city in all its glory and then immediately contrast that with it being completely destroyed by the Red Legion assault. It simply would have been great storytelling. Also, since our guardians probably wouldn't bring weapons to a parade, this theory would explain why we don't have any of our D1 weapons on us when the Red Legion attack. LDR 5001 Meaning LDR was a Destiny 1 sniper rifle, and some people speculate that LDR stands for Long Distance Relationship, and the 5001 refers to the maximum distance of a restraining order. So according to the theory, if 5000 yards is the distance of the restraining order, then 5001 yards would be the closest you can get to someone with a restraining order on you. I've seen this repeated several times in the Destiny community, but upon looking into this myself, the theory seems absurd and highly unlikely to be legitimate. A typical restraining order is 100 yards, and considering that 5,000 yards is almost 3 miles, that seems unrealistically long. I couldn't find a single mention of a 5,000 yard distance, so personally I think that someone just made this theory up and started spreading it around the community. Classes are not boundaries. I believe this one is referring to the lore that Guardians aren't actually bound by their class identities. They can be more inclined to the supers and abilities of one class, but technically they have the ability to use supers that aren't from their subclass. This is probably not related at all, but I found this funny gameplay from a trailer in early D1 where the character throws a solar grenade and then casts a nova bomb a few seconds later. Illegal Ghost Shell The intrusion shell was an illegal ghost shell from Destiny 1 that would literally cause you to get banned if you equipped it. 
Back in the day though, people did not know that it would get you banned. There was this one guy who had it, but he didn't tell anyone else how to get it, and then he proceeded to sell account recoveries where he would charge people $5 to get them the ghost shell. This was obviously appealing to people who considered themselves collectors. There was definitely a lot of interest in getting Destiny's rarest ghost shell. As it turned out though, the mysterious guy who was able to get the ghost shell was only able to do so by hacking. Bungie proceeded to ban him and every player who had illegally obtained the ghost shell. Due to the shell being named Intrusion and the fact that it was only obtainable through hacking, some people believe that it was deliberately designed for the purpose of catching cheaters. Origin of Lighthouse Music The music played in the lighthouse of Destiny 1 has a pretty fascinating origin. At first, the music sounds pretty unique. However, the song that you're hearing is actually just a different Destiny song called The Last Array being played at an extremely slow speed. Here's how The Last Array usually sounds at full speed. Bad Juju Explosions I recently made a video about all of the hidden exotic perks in Destiny 2. It turns out there are quite a few, but perhaps the most shocking is this one from Bad Juju. If you get 146 kills in a row without dying or reloading, it summons this massive green explosion. It feels like you have summoned your own cursed thrall onto your team. Due to this perk being absurdly difficult to activate, it makes me wonder if there are other hidden things like this that we just haven't discovered yet. Dregs speak English A few weeks after Destiny released in 2014, players started noticing that fallen dregs seemed to be shouting at guardians in English. Due to the effects on their voice, it is extremely hard to tell what they are actually saying, but people tend to agree that they are saying something in English. In this clip, it seems to me like they are saying the darkness, followed by some words that are up for debate. Back in the day, this started all kinds of absurd theories that the Guardians are the darkness, but now that we know that's obviously not the case, the true meaning of these strange words remains unknown. Flyable Jump Ships when I was researching for my video called The Entire Evolution of Destiny, I was in contact with a Bungie developer who worked on some of the earliest versions of the game. He told me that there was a version of the game where there were flyable ships that you could use to travel around between different destinations. It seems that this never made it beyond a prototyping stage, but it's still incredible to think that at one point there was a game where you could fly your ship. I saw what happened. This is perhaps one of the most creepy and mysterious entries in this entire video. A few years ago, a player heard a strange voice whispering in-game. The voice said, I saw what happened. We discovered that this occurrence was actually repeatable, but only if you go into a lost sector on the EDZ while wearing a specific set of armor called Reverie Dawn. Here's what the whispering sounds like. Because this voice line is triggered by a specific armor set, it's safe to say that this was very intentionally put here by someone at Bungie. To this day, nobody knows for certain what the spooky whispers might be referencing. Blue Orb Theory This is a theory originating in the Destiny 1 version of the Vault of Glass raid. Players discovered that defeating an oracle a couple of seconds before getting wiped will spawn in this mysterious orb that floats in a specific direction. The orbs also had various different sounds and unique effects. This was very intriguing because the blue orb was not known to be part of any actual mechanic involved in the boss fight, so what could the purpose of these orbs actually be? People began speculating that it might lead to a hidden achievement or quest, or perhaps just a different way to defeat the encounter. To this day, nobody has solved this mystery. Could it just be a strange visual bug? Could it be a scrapped mechanic that was accidentally left within the game? We may never find out the true meaning of these strange orbs. This video took hundreds and hundreds of hours to create. If you want to press the nice algorithm buttons down below, that's totally up to you, but my main request is that you check out the other videos on my channel. I spend about a month on everything I upload to this channel, so I hope you find the other videos worthy of your time. Until then, thank you for joining me on this journey into the depths of the Destiny Iceberg.